Well, this is Bishop R.J. Edwards, and it's indeed a pleasure to be back with you on this radio station. I know that you're going through your tests and your trials at this time when COVID-19, the master plague, is on the land. I want you to know that God will lift you up, turn your life around in spite of what we see. God is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Stay tuned as I go to church. We have been preaching the word of God. Exodus chapter 15 and the 26th verse. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and wilt do that which is right in his sight and will give air to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Some of you today are at your Mara. And your Mara seems to be very bitter. Some individuals are here today that you're having a condition with your family. Some of you are citizens of this country called Jamaica. And you are experiencing some bitterness in your life. Your homes are in disarray. Children in your home not talking to you. Families are there and they are at war one with the other. Your homes have been wrecked with delinquency. You yourself is having a delinquency in your life. Delinquency is a hallmark in our society today. Loads of Christians have backslidden. I saw an article I was reading and the article said that the Pope has banned the Bible stating that the Bible is outdated. And I saw that I became shocked. So I quickly go through Google to do a fact check. And when I realized Google said nothing goes like that. But can you imagine how many thousands of Christians have received that text that the Pope banned the Bible? Do you know, what did he say? The Bible is outdated? That's false. He didn't ban the Bible. He didn't say the Bible is outdated. But somebody wants to send a message through WhatsApp. I think the devil has instigated this. Because there are some young Christians who would have seen this. And instantly... It hit them so hard and they turned their backs against God. Some of you right here in the service, you're faced with some situations that are standing before you. And you're shouting, God, if you don't come to my rescue, I will be lost. Do you know that COVID has caused a lot of Christians to backslide? A lot of pastors are talking now. Said the people that were in their church are not there no more. And since church has reopened in Jamaica, that there are many churches that are empty. Thank God for the lighthouse. Many of you are still in church. Somebody here today, in your life there is a level of bitterness. Bitterness because you have lost your job. Bitterness because you have lost your relationship with your spouse. Bitterness because you are confronted with confusion. Sick and helpless are some of you. But I want to commend those of you. Though it seems like you are helpless. You are crying out to God who you know is your help and your very present help in the times of trouble. 
I see you, sister, in your bed. You're lifting up your hands and you're saying, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou shalt draw thyself from me, tell me, God, where shall I go? I see some of you praying because somehow you figured that you have failed. Many of us have failed, failed in a bad way. But you're still saying, God, you're my refuge. David failed too. And he lifted his hands to God in Psalm 51 and said, Lord, have mercy on me. Some of you are in your bitterness, but you're still in church. You struggled in your life and hell doesn't want to let you go. In this church service, there is something awesome that is about to break because you didn't let go of God. You held on to God with your whole heart and something supernatural is about to break. Thank God you're still attending church possibility exists that there are some backsliders who are listening to me on the radio but I'm here to tell you though you have backslid and God still has his eyes on you he said I will never leave you neither will I forsake struggling with bitterness in your life hurt by people who you love Family members has disbanded you. Sicknesses and disease has creeped upon you. Yesterday you were okay, but today you're not. You were happy yesterday, but today you are sad. You need God to come to your rescue. I wonder if I'm talking to somebody who is here listening to me. You're one of them who I'm talking to. Can you raise your hand if you figure that I've brought a message to you already? Because you want God to come to your rescue. If you don't come to my rescue, I'm going to be lost. Lift your hands up and praise God. Come on, everybody. Praise Jesus. The portion of scripture that I read today found in the book of Exodus chapter 15 and the 26th verse. In the last clause of the seven words, I am the Lord that healeth thee. When were these words spoken? These words were spoken. When the children of Israel came upon their bitter ward. When they wanted a breakthrough. Because they have traveled for many days. Three days and could not get any water. They were thirsty. And at the same time hungry. Same time their enemy the Egyptians hated them. The enemy were coming upon them like a flood. And at the same time, they needed a breakthrough. When they came to the Mara, it was a bitter situation that they faced. I'm here to help somebody today. You need an understanding as to what is happening to you. God has given me a job to help you to understand what is happening to you. God has given me a word to release to you. Can I tell you what God wants me to tell you? Your Mara is just a test. Tell somebody the bitterness in your life, it is just a test. Do you know the reason why God calls our foot bottom to be so ticklish? There's a sensor that is in your foot bottom. That the moment you step on a pin or a tom tack or maybe a maca or something, it sends a message 
that you are stepping in danger. Story is told about a girl who did not have any feeling in her foot bottom. Neither any feeling in her hands. And it is said she could put her hand on a stove while the stove is burning hot. And she don't feel it. She could step in a fire and it doesn't burn her. Which means that if you keep your hand on the fire for too long, you could lose your hand. If you keep your feet in a hot fire for too long, you could lose your feet. So why pain come? Why as you step into a pin or something that can hurt you? Why the pain is there? So that it could awake your senses to move from the situation. So why pain is in your life is to awake you and cause you to be sensitive to what's happening around you. Some of you, if you declared, if I didn't have a problem, I wouldn't know that God could save them. I wouldn't know what faith in God could do but you open your mouth and you start to declare true it all I've learned to trust in Jesus true it all I've learned to trust in God because you had a problem because you had a circumstance God has opened up the doors for you and caused you to mount up now because of your prayer life things has changed so the pain comes to cause you to pray. The pain comes to open your senses. That when you start to pray, something supernatural is about to happen. I feel like something now has started to change in your life. Since you realize the pain is there. When the pain comes, you rush to a doctor and say, Doctor, can you give me a prescription so I could get some tablets to deal with the pain? The moment you take those tablets, you feel that the pain start leaving. Why cause that? Because the pain came, you rush to a doctor. Well, the pain is in your life to cause you to run to Dr. Jesus. It's an awakening pain. The pain is not to kill you, but if you let it stay too long without addressing it, it will kill you. I wonder how many of you have been quickened by what you see. All of a sudden, a strong realization comes to you. When the enemy says something about you. And all along you thought that that was your friend. But since the friend opened their mouth. You are now convinced. This is not the right company. How many have been hit by people who you thought love you? But when they cause the pain, you said, mm -mm, I don't want to be in your company no more. So pain comes to awake our senses that something is wrong. So the pain comes to awaken your senses. You're in the wrong company. If David's son Absalom didn't cause him pain, David would have been eaten from him and he would eventually poison him. Some of those people who cause you pain didn't make the mistake and cause the pain. You would have been dead. Lift your hands and say, thank God for the pain. Thank God for the struggle. Thank God for the neighbor who turned against me. And spike my senses. What, what does it mean when David said, if it was my enemy, I would have understood. 
But it was a man, my equal and my God. We went to the house of God together. It's a church brother, a church sister, a pastor who mess with you, who tries to tear you apart, who tries to destroy you. It was that man who you trusted. I'm sensing that I'm talking to a woman. Because you trusted the person so much until you found out that he's no good. Touch the wrong button and wake you up. But now that you are awakened, what are you going to do? I feel like somebody is about to do something. Because now that you're going through something and it feels like it will never end. How many have ever been a crossroads in your life and you feel that there is no comeback? Well, I got news to tell you. There is a comeback for every sin. Might as well you get ready to fly. Might as well you get ready to sing. Might as well you get ready to shout. Might as well you get ready to glorify God. There is a comeback for you today. There's a praise in your mouth, woman. Shakalabos. I said there's a praise in your mouth, sir. I see you sitting in before your staring wheel. You're there in your bedroom. They're there in your prison cell. I come by to tell you that God is causing a comeback in your life. I don't care how far you have gone. I don't care how deep you have been sunken. Quicksand is right up to your mouth. It's like your nose is going to take a dive. But I see angels at your rescue. Woman of God, I see angels at your rescue. There are some forces even in your own church. Some of them are on the executive board. They're trying to get rid of you. But a preacher is standing here today to tell you that you shall not die. I don't care what they say, how they say, and what they do and how they do it. The preacher comes to tell you that God says your head is anointed with oil and your cup is running over. The preacher is here telling you today that surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Shakatayabus. Halababakasat. I preach in some community that is loaded with witchcraft. And no wonder why some of you are under the witchcraft powers of evil. There's a demonic force that has an assignment. If it's not after you, it is after your child or your children. Not after you, it is after your spouse. We need some Holy Ghost men of God. Some Holy Ghost women of God who have been through the fire themselves. Some men and women of God who have been through the test themselves to come out and push their chest forward and tell you, woman, don't die yet. Your head is anointed with oil. I feel like something. I told my wife that I feel another level of the anointing. I said, I feel another level of the anointing. The anointing is getting stronger. I feel like I'm busting something through the airways. I feel like something is being busted. I don't care how long you're wearing that thing that somebody put on you to destroy you. Today is being lifted. The glory of God is over you to lift you up and turn your life around. Somebody open your mouth and, and give God a praise. Thank God for you. Because your hands are clean. Can I testify? My hands are clean. I don't work Obia, so Obia can't catch me. I don't work witchcraft, so no witchcraft 
can harm me. I burn witchcraft. I burn up ya. I set them things ablaze. If you say witchcraft don't work and obia don't work, what about people's mouth? Well, I've been through that too and it didn't kill me. I got further to go. I'm mounting up with wings like eagle. I got to tell somebody that the anointing of God is over your life. You shall not die. You shall live and shout your praise. Somebody praise God. I feel the glory of hand of God is moving there's a move in the move come on touch somebody and say there's a move in this move the Holy Ghost power is moving like a magnet do you know how magnet works the thing could be a distance as long as it's another metal it's pulling it to itself my Holy Ghost is like a magnet. It's pulling me to him. Can I tell you God is like a consuming fire. The closer I get to him is the more I see. Glory of the soon coming. The more I get close to him is more fire. I feel in my hands fire. Fire from an enemy. Fire for the wicked devils. Some of you better get some fires in your hand and start to send it to your house. Somebody better get some fire in your hands. Send it to your backyard. Send it on your front veranda. Send it to your bedroom. You better start open your mouth and start to send a dynamite right where the enemy is lurking. God is stirring a mighty revival across the nation. Join us on Facebook and on Zoom every morning at 6 a.m. as Christians across Jamaica and the world pray for this mighty revival. Call 876-437-9664. That's 876-437-9664. Or visit the Bishop Ruan Edwards Ministry Facebook page. Oh, who I am. The Lord gave me a vision, and I need your help. God is calling for a mighty, mighty revival on the island. And he's saying that I need to get a truck, an evangelism truck, with all the equipment, all the speaker boxes, the amplifiers, the drum sets. He tells me that I need to get bright lights on it with projector and camera and everything to touch this nation. I need you to help me. I need seven of these trucks because there are many pastors who are having difficulties now pitching tents. We need to put these trucks on almost every street in the communities across the nation. I need to get the first one. I need you to help me. If I can find 300 persons who will send me at least 20,000 or 10,000 or whatever you can afford to help me to get this truck. I would be very happy. God is calling for a mighty revival. And tell you what, I'm ready for it. Would you help me to get this truck, please? If this program has been a blessing for you, call my number, please. I need you to send me your love offering to get this truck. You're going to be proud to see this evangelism truck with all the equipment on it. All we need to do is park it on the street and preach the gospel. Seven of these trucks are needed to go through this island. Help me to get the first one. To make your pledge towards that evangelism truck, call or text me right now at 378 Zero three eight two three seven eight zero three eight two. Let me repeat for you three seven eight zero three eight two. Call me to make a pledge towards the truck. 
put 876 in front of that number. Have a great evening. Well, I got good news for you. Just reminding you that the fasting service at the train station starts on this Wednesday. Be there at nine o'clock. The healing program starts again, resuming fasting at the train station this Wednesday, starting at 9 a.m. Come in your hundreds. I feel the five God is going to bring healing to everyone who comes. Come to the train station in Spanish Town for the day of prayer and fasting, beginning at 9 a.m. this Wednesday at the train station in Spanish Town. You will be blessed. Bishop R.J. Edwards will be there and plus many others who will be ministering the word. Come expecting the blessings of the Lord. Looking forward to see you. The grand resuming of the prayer and fasting at the train station is this Wednesday. I'm looking forward to see you 9 a.m. God bless you. Bishop R.J. Edwards tuning out, and I'm looking forward to hearing from you on Love FM at 10.30 this night. Look forward to see you. Have a good night. Bishop Edwards saying goodbye.